back with another tutorial today. Um, this is what I call an oversized hot pad. This is one I made last Christmas time and I gifted them to a bunch of family members and my sister's comment was, this is the kitchen item I always needed and just never knew. Well, this one needs washed. So it's big enough for a nine by 13 and it's even bigger. You can even put two things on here, but I got tired of piling hot pads on the table, little ones to fit my bigger pots or my bigger pans. So I made big ones and they've been a huge hit. It's one of my most popular blog posts ever. So I thought I would make a tutorial for it today. So what you need is some fabric. I am going to use my summertime bananas. <laughs> um, I'm going to use this for the back and the binding. I might use this for the back if I have enough. We'll see. So before we start, you can also purchase a PDF version, like a printable version with written instructions and photos of this tutorial in my Etsy shop, Pin Cut Sew Studio on Etsy, um, so that you don't have to keep referring back to this video every time. A lot of people prefer that. It's a couple dollars to buy it. Um, so then you can just store it and have it and make it over and over. These make great gifts, so you might want to keep it till Christmas time. Um, also, you can go follow my blog at pincutsostudio.com. Make sure you subscribe to the channel here because I'm posting a lot of videos lately. And you can find me on Instagram at pincutso. Okay, also you're going to need some cotton quilt batting. I like this warm and natural cotton kind. Don't use polyester kind for this. Um, this comes in a craft size and it goes on sale. So I got this giant thing for like $9 and you're going to need two layers of it inside your hot pad. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to cut my main fabric to measure let me check, 13 by 18 inches. I'm going to straighten this edge. I want my bananas going sideways, of course. So this will be the 18 inch length. If you are unfamiliar with cutting with a rotary cutter, then I actually have a video on that. You can find right here on the YouTube channel. Um, and I'll link to a good rotary cutter and mat set that I like in the notes below too. And this will be 13. Okay, once you have your front cut, then you're going to cut your two layers of cotton batting. You don't want to cut them to the exact same size, though. Up. Okay, so I've doubled it. You have two layers I'm going to cut, and you want to cut it slightly larger than your front piece. Find my scissors. Always losing my scissors. Okay, so my batting is bigger than my front. I have some wrinkles. I'm going to iron those out in just a minute. You can safely iron cotton quilt batting. Okay, I know this piece is not quite big enough, but I really wish it was. You know, it would just barely cover. So I'm just going to use this. I can always go buy more. I get so stingy with my favorite fabrics. <laughs> okay, I'm also going to use this for the binding, so I want to make sure I get this as much in the corner as I can. So you're going to cut your backing fabric the same as your matting. dropped my chocolate liner in the trash can. Okay. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. 
And now I'm going to place pins. Um, you could also use these quilting pins, but this is such a small project that I don't feel like I'm in very much risk of stabbing myself if I just put a bunch of pins. Make sure you're getting all through all the layers. And just put pins pretty much everywhere, every couple inches, because you're holding all these layers together. Okay, for the next part, you're definitely going to need to have a walking foot for your sewing machine, which is useful for quilting. I will link you to a universal one that works on lots of machines in the notes because it helps the, the layers move along all together instead of getting bunched up. Anytime you work with batting, and the more you sew, the more you'll work with batting, um, you'll wanna use a walking foot. And it's just a useful sewing tool to have anyway when you sew on knit fabrics, on stretchy fabrics. It's good to have, so they're not expensive and it's worth picking one up before you go further. So, I like to quilt mine in horizontal stripes going this way. So instead of, sometimes when I mark with this, it doesn't wash out and it's kind of hard to see. So I like to it. I like to mark with masking tape. So I'm going to find the middle. So my width is 13. So I'm going to find six and a half. I'll just make a mark at the top. Mark at the bottom. Move some pins around. turn so you can see. I'm going to mark my middle line with tape. So that's going to be my first stitching line right across here. Then I'm going to sew every one inch after that and one inch over here too. You can either move your tape or you can find a spot on your sewing machine and kind of um, use them as a guide. Some machines have nice stitch guides, mine does not. So I'll show you what I do. It's a little bit janky, but it works for me. <laughs> so we're just gonna go quilt our one inch lines all the way across. You could also do like a diagonal grid if you wanted or a straight grid or horizontal, whatever, I mean, vertical lines, whatever you like, but I always like to, I just like to do them horizontal lines. Okay, this is my FAF machine that I quilt on. It's from the 60s and it's a total workhorse. Um, FAF machines have a built-in walking foot. That's what this is. Um, if you don't have a FAF or don't have a built-in one, um, it's an attachment with a foot on it. So like I said, this I don't have a stitch guide for this machine. So this is my, um, my makeshift way of marking where one inch away is. I just tape my chopstick to my sewing machine. So. I'll sew my first line of stitching and then I'll run that line of stitching along my chopstick to make the next one. And then you're just going to sew all of your lines that way, removing the pins as you go. Okay, my first line is sewn. I want to make sure I don't have any puckers on the back. If you're getting any puckers at all, you'll want to take it out, take all your pins out, smooth it out really good from the back and the front, and then repin. So now I can remove my tape and I'm just going to put my first line of stitching where my chopstick is. That's how I know where my next line of stitching goes. I'm just gonna keep going. Notice how I'm starting a little bit off of my front fabric and I'll end a little bit off my front fabric too. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going all the way to this side and then I'm gonna flip it and do the other side. 
Okay, I finished quilting mine. Now you may notice that your side edges are no longer quite straight. That's because we sewed this direction and then we sewed this direction. So it just kind of got pushed out of proportion, which is pretty normal. So my top edge still is straight. So I'm just going to even the sides up by lining up a top edge with a straight line on my ruler and trimming off the crooked. And then you're gonna straighten it up all the way around. It's okay if you lost a little bit of width because this isn't a project that needs to be exactly the right size. So here too, I need to trim it so it's straight with the other edges. Okay, I'm all straightened out. Time to add a binding. So I have another tutorial on how to sew a quilt binding by hand on the back and that's what I do for my bigger quilts because it gives a nicer heirloomish finish. But this is not an heirloom so I like to use the machine binding method, so I'm going to demonstrate that this time. I'm going to use my same flowery fabric for my binding. I need it to be, let's see, width times height. Width times height here is 65, and then I'm going to add 8 to 10 inches, so I'm going to make it like 73 inches, and we'll see how that goes not working with a whole lot of fabric so I might have to piece more than I wanted to but let's just see you want to cut your quilt binding two and a quarter inches wide in strips cut off my raw edge okay two and a quarter inches Only got one going that way. I'm gonna have to cut some short ones until I feel like I have enough. I'm definitely gonna go buy more of this fabric from Hobby Lobby because it's so cute and I just want to have some in my stash. Okay let's see what this gets me. So to piece these together you do not just sew them end to end like this. You actually want a more seamless diagonal seam here because it reduces bulk. So you're gonna place them at a right angle like so. Then you're going to put a pin in it. And if you need to mark it, you can, but you're just going to sew, see how I left a quarter inch overlap? You're gonna sew from this corner to this corner. All right, and then you just trim this off, including the dog ears. And then when you iron that out, it will just look like this. So you continue adding strips until you have enough. If you had full length fabric, unlike me, you won't have to add this many strips, probably just two, two long ones. The width of your fabric would have worked. But this is what I'm gonna have to do. Okay, I have more than enough. Just for fun, I added in a strip of this black and white because I think that'll look cute. So now I'm gonna go press this. So these are flat and I'm gonna press it in half lengthwise all the way down. Alrighty, my binding is ready. Um, on this end, on your left end, you're gonna want to, instead of folding it in half to the end, fold this up at a right angle, 45 degree angle, whatever, and then <laughs> Fold this back up like this so the other end can tuck inside of it when you come back around. Okay, so for the hand quilted binding or hand sewn binding on that I do on big quilts, I always sew, you always want to sew the binding onto the front piece and then it gets turned around to the back to be hand stitched. But for this method, we're going to start on the back. So you're going to start sewing on your binding, you're going to leave few inches here 
and you're going to start sewing about here. So you're going to back stitch and then you're going to stitch until a quarter inch from this other end. You don't really need pins once you get the hang of this, but I'm not going to pin any of this. I'm just going to keep it lined up. So you're going to stop here and back stitch, and then I'll show you what to do once I've done that. Okay, I stitched this in a quarter inch seam. Hopefully you can see that. Just got gloomy outside my window. Sorry about that. Okay, so now you're going to fold this up at a 45 degree angle. So sort of press it with your fingers. And then you're going to fold it back down on itself so that the top fold is even with the top. So you have this flap right here. And then you're going to sew all starting all the way at the end back stitch and go all the way to the next end where you will also stop a quarter inch from the next edge. You're going to do that on all three corners. Okay, I went all the way around, but then I stopped so I could show you what to do at the end. Let me trim off all my threads. So here we have this part that you left loose, and here's the next strip. It's going to look so cute with a tiny bit of the black. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to trim this about an inch away from this angled edge. I'm going to open that up and tuck it inside like so. And I'm just gonna keep stitching. Here's where I left off. You'll wanna start at the end. Keep stitching until I meet where I started. Okay, my binding is attached. I'm going to trim this up a little bit. Okay, this next step I only just learned, but I find it really helpful. So it is optional, but it does help you when you go to turn it to the other side, because this is what's going to happen. We're going to turn it out this way. So I read a tip that if you zigzag inside your seam line along this entire edge, it just makes everything flatter and it makes it easier to turn your thing to the other side without it bunching up over here. So I'm going to go sew a zigzag along the entire edge, making sure I don't pass my stitches though. Alrighty. I should have mentioned you obviously have to sew one side at a time with your zigzag because you need to keep your mitered corner here loose. So let's see how that works out. So you're going to flip it over to this side and this is the last step. This is how it goes. You're going to, while you sew, turn your binding to the front, making sure it's covering your stitching line and you're going to edge stitch all the way along it. When you get to a corner, you just, before you get there, fold it over like this, and then like this, and sort of make sure your needle goes there right in the corner, turn, and keep going. So if you wanna place pins or clips, you can. These are handy little guys. I like to just clip the corners to get them in place before I start sewing. That sort of gets everything turned out. I'll link these wonder clips in the notes too. They're really handy tools to have. I know I mention them in almost every video, so that's proof that they're handy. And then the rest of it, I don't clip, but you can if you want to, if you are new especially, but I just find it easiest to kind of just work it along with my hands as I go. I'm also gonna clip this joined part Make sure that turns out nicely because it's a little bulkier right there. I think the tiny bit of black and white is pretty cute. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go edge stitch this right along this edge so it'll look really nice from the front. Ta-da! I'm done. Whoops, I have threads. I love how this method looks on the front. I think it looks so great. The zigzagging definitely did help it lie flatter, especially on smaller projects. That's a good tip. I like my little tag of black and white. Um, you can see on the back, it doesn't even show. The thread, the thread just disappears into the backing and it looks great. So one tip, 
If you have trouble with this, if you're a beginner and you have a hard time catching the edge, you can also just sew a zigzag all the way around it to catch your binding in, and that, that actually looks cute. I've seen a lot of pot holders even from the store that do the binding like that. So, seems like I had one more tip for you, but now I don't know what it was. Sorry. <laughs> I hope you like this. Oh yeah, you can also go to my blog, or if you purchase the PDF version of this tutorial, there's a set of gift tags you can get that say oversized hot pad because sometimes, you know, when you hand make people things, they don't know what it is. So um, I like to just include cute tags. And this is when I gifted them for Christmas, I rolled them up like this. And then I tied it with a ribbon and put the gift tag on there. So um, there's a good idea for you. Just head over to the link, the blog link, and you can grab that. And I'll also link the Etsy shop listing for the pattern. So if you make this, I would love to see. You can tag me on Instagram at pincutso or you can go to my blog and shoot me an email. It's pincutsostudio.com and I will see you soon.